Hi guys, my name is Shireen and in this video I'll be going over the complementation test. Complementation tests are used for heterogenic traits. If you remember from lecture, heterogenic traits are traits that have a mutation in, in any number of genes and they give rise to the same phenotype. Multiple genes can independently cause the same effect. Remember that these are different than polygenic traits, which are traits affected by multiple genes in an additive effect. Next, Alleles causing a heterogenic trait may be dominant or recessive and autosomal or X-linked, but for the complementation test to work, we must know that we have all recessive alleles. This will make more sense when we go through an example later. Complementation tests are used to determine if a mutation is in the same or different genes. We do this by observing phenotypes. The steps of a complementation test are pretty simple. First, you take two organisms that show the same mutant phenotype and then you cross them. If the offspring of the cross exhibit a mutant phenotype, we know those mutations are not complementary because they, work, they were in the same gene. If the offspring recover the wild type phenotype, then we say that the two mutations are complementary in different genes. Now let's go through an example. So for this example, let's assume that blue flower petals will be the wild type phenotype and pink petals will be the mutant phenotype. If we could see the alleles that contribute to the different petal colors, they would look a little bit like this. The blue petals have plus signs for both alleles in the W1 gene and plus signs for both alleles in the W2 gene. This is what gives the petal the blue phenotype. Now, for heterogenic traits, there are multiple scenarios that could lead to the same mutant pink phenotype. I've drawn three different scenarios for us. Even if the mutations were in different genes, they can all contribute to the same pink phenotype. All right, so for mutant A, we see that there is a mutation in the W1 gene, the green gene, but wild type for the W2 gene. The green mutation causes the pink petals. For mutant B, we see a different mutation in the same W1 gene can lead to the petals being pink as well. However, for mutant C, this time there is a mutation in the W2 gene, the orange gene, which is different than A and B, but we still see pink petals. Up until now, I've shown the two different phenotypes, blue and pink, and the three mutations that can lead to a pink phenotype. But if we just observed the phenotypes, we couldn't be able to tell if gene W1 or W2 caused the mutation. Now it's time for the complementation test. First, let's do A cross B. We would take one allele from the W1 gene in A and one allele from the W2 gene in A. We would take the same from B, one from W1 and one from W2. Here we would observe the mutant phenotype. In this scenario, we would say that complementation does not occur because the mutations are in the same gene. Now let's go over what B cross C would look like. So again, we take one set of alleles from the two genes in C and the same from B. As we can see here, the mutant phenotype does not occur, but the wild type phenotype, the blue petals, were recovered. How did this happen? Well, as we said before, the mutations for the complementation tests are recessive. So C brought a wild type plus phenotype from the W1 gene, and B brought a wild type plus allele for the W2 gene. The recessive mutant alleles were masked by dominance. Here we would say that complementation has occurred because the mutations are on different genes. Now that we've gone through two crosses, I would like for you to try A cross C on your own. Pause the video here, and when you've attempted to cross, press play. Okay, so hopefully by now you've given A cross C a try on your own, and I'll be going over the answer. So like we did before, we would take one allele from the W1 gene from A, which looks like this, and one allele from the W2 gene from A, which was the wild type. And we do the same for C. So we would take one allele from the W1 gene from C, which was the plus wild type. And we do 
the W2 genus well, oh, sorry, it was in the center, from the W2 gene. So as you can see, the mutant alleles are on different genes. So here we would say that complementation does occur. And the wild type phenotype would recover. So we would have a blue flower. All right. Thanks for watching.